So in this experiment, I just want to show you how easy it is to connect Bullet Solver and Touch Designer to the real world using something like TouchOSC on an Apple device. So on my phone, I'm going to go to TouchOSC and I'm going to make sure that everything's set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into options and make sure my accelerometer is checked. I'm then going to check my IP setup. So I'm going to go to command prompt on my desktop. I'm going to type in ipconfig. And ipconfig will return my computer's local IPv4 address, which in this case is 192.168.1.226. So with that, what I can do is I put in the right host address, make sure that I take a note of my outgoing OSC port, and then I'm going to set it up to be a layout that has a button. In this case, you could either have made your own, but I'm going to use keys because it allows me to press a button. With that done, we can transfer over to Touch Designer. And I want to troubleshoot to make sure that that is connected. So I'm going to go to my chop and I'm going to bring in an OSC in. I'm going to change my network port to be the output from Touch OSC, which in this case is 7000. And we can see that because I enabled accelerometer data, I'm already getting an X, Y, and a Z. So a, a forward, back, left, right, and twist off my device. If I push one of the buttons on my screen, we can see I start to get values for that coming in. I'm going to reset it because I'm actually only going to make use of one push button in this example. Okay, so now I've got my OSC data coming in and it's fairly stable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split out my UI going to show a panel and I'm going to show a text editor and slide this over to the right. I am going to introduce a bullet solver and I'm also going to set up a standard render scene. So I'm going to do a camera, a light, and then I'm going to introduce a render. I'm going to move my camera way back to something about, about 10. I'm also going to lift it up by about 1. And then I'm going to rotate it down on the X by about 10 as well. Let's continue lifting that up. I'm then going to attach this to an out top that by default will be showing in my main project one panel. Okay, let's go and make some quick changes to our bullet solver. We're just going to make a really simple ball game again, like we did in our last tutorial. But this time we're going to use our OSC input to control our balls platform. So I'm going to come inside and delete both of my actors. I'm going to make a new one and call it floor. And inside floor, I'm going to make sure it's uh, an infinite mass. I'm going to go inside. I'm then going to make a box. And I'm going to attach my box to a null. And on my null, I'm going to enable display and render. Because remember, they're the most important things to get our SOP to show up inside of our 3D scene. Between these two, I'm going to insert a transform and I'm going to scale my shape slightly. So I'm going to make it about five long. I'm going to make it much thinner. I'm going to make it about 0.3 and I'm also going to match my Z. So now if we have a look at our geometry, I have a big square. I'm going to turn on auto initialize. And now if I show collision shape, we'll see that our entire box is a collision. I also want to add a second actor, it's going to be our ball. I'm going to leave this dynamic and I'm going to turn its mass up to about 10 inside its property panel. Inside our ball, I'm going to introduce a sphere. And I'm not going to change much to this sphere, I'm just going to add a null and display it and render it. In its main actor properties, I'm going to transform it up on the Y slightly, just so it floats in the right space. So our ball is slightly above our panel. And then I'm going to adjust my camera so I can see all of this. So there we go. So now I have a camera top down view. If I lift my light slightly, we can start to see all of our space. To make things a bit more exciting, I'm going to give our shapes textures just so I can see them. 
So I'm going to movie file in the default pine needle. And I'm also going to bring in the, let's do the box map. Going to give these both constants. So it means our light is now redundant because if we start using constants, they don't accept light. But we could just as easily use a fong to retain that and connect it to the color map. The stretching over my rectangle is, it seems a bit weird because it's stretching over the entire box. So this is super compressed. If we wanted to alter that, we could insert a texture operator in here and then change it to be something like face. Let me change the scale way up. So it gives us a nicer tile pattern. Okay, from there, I'm gonna come up to the top level of my bullet solver. I'm going to initialize it all and I'm gonna start it and see what happens. My ball falls down and lands dead in the center. If I was to rotate my platform, the ball should start rolling off, which it does. And hopefully you can see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna use our OSC gyroscope data to control our platform. So I'm going to reinitialize it all. In my bullet solver, I'm going to insert an in chop going to connect up the data. And now in here, I'd need to work out what data I want to transform where. First thing I'm going to do always is attach it to a null. I'm going to pick up my phone and I'm going to tilt it forward and back. So towards my laptop and away from it. And we can really clearly see that this channel is the one that's changing. So I want to compare to my rotation. So that is the effect that I'm doing with my phone. I'm going to connect that in there as the reference. The problem now is that one, it's reversed from the direction my phone's going as I tilt forward, this tilts back. And two, the movement ratio is far too small. So I'm going to insert a math between my in and my null. I'm going to change my from range from about zero to one to about zero to 45. And in my actual reference, I'm going to negate the value. So now I have an exact replica, almost to the exact, when I use a range of 45 degrees of what my phone is doing. Okay, with that done, I'm gonna lock that back to an, a value and I'm gonna rotate my phone from left to right. And let's see how we Im influence our panel the same. If I do it on Y, it simply twists on, twists on the spot. That's not what I want to happen. And so it must be Z. So this is the effect we want. So I'm going to move my top value into Z. And same thing, it is currently the inverse of what my phone is doing. So I'm going to negate that value as well. So now I have a panel that goes left and right and forward and back in the same ratio that I am with my phone. To try and get rid of some of this jitter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a lag I'm going to set its value to 0.2, so leave it at default. And all that means is that the values coming out of our accelerometer are smoothed over 0.2 of a second so that we don't get as much of a jitter. So now if I come up a level, initialize all and start, we'll see my ball drops. And I am now in control of it using the accelerometer inside of my iPhone. I'm going to place my phone flat on the table so that my panel stays flat. And then I want to introduce the use of the reset button. So one of the keys on my phone is a trigger. I'm going to add a chop execute. And I'm going to link it to this channel only. So I'm going to say star push star and off to one. And what I want to happen when off to one is triggered is that it resets all of my objects or starts the simulation. So I'm going to say operator b solver one dot par dot init dot pulse, and then I'm going to say operator b solver one dot par dot start dot pulse, and all this does is it goes to this object and pushes this button, then that button. So now, if I initialize them all, pick up my phone and push the button, we can see that it starts the simulation for us. 
And if I push it while it's activated, it keeps restarting the simulation. Using a similar method as we did in our last Bullet Solver tutorial, I want to add a condition for when the ball has fallen too far. So I'm going to add the Bullet Solver chop to my ball, and I'm going to add a chop execute to this. And I'm going to link it purely, so if we start it and roll our ball off the side, I want to have a look at its TY, and I want to say when TY has gone past a certain point, reset it. So in here, I'm going to say on value change is on, and then I want channel to be TY. I'm going to edit the code, and I'm going to say if val is greater or equal to negative, or sorry, less than or equal to negative 10, then I want to go up one level, b solver one dot par dot init dot pulse. So if my ball falls too far, go up one level and tell your parent to reinitialize everything. So if we roll the ball off, it should get to negative 10. Oh, we receive an error. Oh, I've missed operator off the start. That's why it's not working. So now if I push my start button, roll my ball off, it should get to negative 10 and reset everything. And really quickly, that's taken our last tutorial covering Bullet Solver and allowed users to engage with it in the real world. So you can start to see the sort of gamified experiences that we can build using something as simple as an iPhone with a $10 app and the amazing physics-based Bullet Solver inside Touch Designer. Again, I hope this gets your creative juices flowing. Please do get in touch. I'd love to see what you're making with Bullet Solver. Whoa, whoa,